G'day, I'm James, and I have a confession to make. I don't believe in subtraction. To me, subtraction does not exist. Subtraction is actually just addition. In fact, I say subtraction is the addition of the opposite. Whoa, what do I mean by that? Well, to explain, let me tell you a story, a story that's not true. When I was growing up back in Australia, my parents used to sit me in the backyard in a sandbox to go play in the sand. Not true. And I used to start my hours of play by first leveling the sand to make a perfectly flat level surface. Whoa. In fact, I really admired that. I was a zen-like child. Not true. And I spent many hours admiring that flat level state. In fact, I even gave it a name. I called it the zero state. Wow. But then, after many hours of contemplating zero, I had an epiphany. I realized I could actually reach behind me, grab a handful of sand, and make a pile of sand in my sandbox. And I called it one in this untrue story. And then I realized I could do it again, a second handful of sand to make two piles, which I called two. And again, to make three piles, three, four, five, and so on. I discovered the counting numbers. I also discovered zero. Wow. In fact, to go further, I even realized I could start doing mathematics with these numbers I discovered in this untrue story. For example, I could do two piles of sand, two piles of sand, plus three piles of sand. If I put them together in my sandbox, I could see it would make this picture, which I had called five. Two plus three equals five. I discovered basic addition. Marvels and wonders we had with the counting numbers and the addition of the counting numbers. But then one day, I had the most profound epiphany of all. Instead of making piles of sand, I realized I could do the opposite. Actually start with my level sandbox and take some sand away and make a hole. And I even called that the opposite of one. Because I realized in some sense the hole really is the opposite of a pile. Because of this, you take a pile and you put it, put it together with a hole because you can then take all the sand of the pile, use it to fill up the hole and end up back at the zero state. Holes undo piles. They're kind of opposite of piles, so I call this the opposite of one. And I call two holes the opposite of two. And I call three holes the opposite of three and so on. Because it all made perfect sense to me. Two piles of sand and two holes, everything fill up. It would be the opposite of that to get me back to the zero state. Brilliant. Lovely. But then I went to school and people said, no, 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 you don't call it the opposite. People like to use the symbol a little dash. A little dash one. Instead of opposite of one, they'd say dash one. Actually, they would say negative one. They called these negative numbers. So I realized, okay, I discovered the negative numbers in this untrue story. So there's negative one, there's negative two, and so on and so on. But then I was also in school, I was being taught this thing called subtraction. Where we're doing little puzzles like five, take away three. But actually, even then, I did not believe in subtraction. I didn't believe in takeaway. To me, this was addition, because I was a strange child in this untrue story, remember. This is to me is really five plus the opposite of three. Because in my mind, I was thinking of five piles of sand, there's five, plus three holes, there's the opposite of three. I can see right then that actually this pile could fill up that hole, this pile could fill up that hole, this pile could fill up that hole. I would be left with these two piles. Five plus the opposite of three equals two. Equals two. Now, of course, all my colleagues were thinking take away five piles, take away three piles, would leave two piles. And I kind of actually did that as well. Because in effect, by using these piles to fill up those holes, I took them away and was left with two piles. So we're actually in agreement with our thinking. But my thinking was about five plus the opposite of three. My colleagues were thinking five, take away three. But then I realized I had an advantage. So I could say, oh, oh, OK, classmates, what do you think of this? Three, take away five. And everyone thought, that's impossible. I've got three objects. I can't take away five objects upon them because there's not enough objects to take away from. OK. But in my thinking, I realized, actually, I had an answer to that. Because to me, there's no such thing as takeaway, no such thing as subtraction. This was three plus the opposite of five. And that makes perfect sense in my sandbox model. Three piles of sand plus five holes. There they are. I can see exactly what's going to happen. Three of those piles fill up three of those holes, leaving me two holes. I can see the answer is two holes, the opposite of two. Whoa, whoa, this is great. In fact, that thinking stayed with me all along. If I was doing some sort of a more complicated mathematics problem, I got to some line of arithmetic like six, take away nine, plus one, take away two or something. In my mind, I was thinking, OK, OK, not take away, not take away. This is really six piles and nine holes and one pile and two holes. 
In fact, I can see in my mind, six piles and one pile is really seven piles, and nine holes and two holes makes 11 holes. It's really seven piles and 11 holes, which actually I can see in my mind's eye. I'll draw it here very quickly. Four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and an extra four, three, four. I can see all that would fill up all that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in my mind's eye and leave me four holes. The answer must be negative four. So this imagery is actually really powerful and fantastic and wonderful. But actually, it gets very tedious drawing piles and holes. At least in my mind, it still gets tedious. So let me do a more efficient type of picture here. And people who know me know that I love dots. So imagine I'm looking at, uh, at my sandbox from above, down at those piles and down from above looking at those holes. So maybe I can draw a dot. In fact, let me get rid of this wording now. Get rid of, draw a dot to represent, I'm looking at a pile from above. Therefore, that would be my dot represents a pile. And how do I draw a hole? They all draw like a hollow for a hole. That would be my hole, which I'm thinking of as the opposite of a dot. The opposite of a dot, an anti-dot. Actually, kids like to call the opposite of a dot a Todd. I really like Todd. Dot backwards. Anyhow, so the opposite of a dot, an anti-dot, a Todd, whatever you want to call it. And again, a pile and a hole. If I bring a pile with a hole, I guess they just, what the, the pile fills up the hole. I'm left with that picture. Nothing, nothing, but I don't know how to draw nothing, but I do nothing to draw nothing. So I've got nothing left. They annihilate each other. A pile and a hole undo each other. Um, maybe like a science fiction, matter and antimatter, bring them together, poof, I've got nothing. So in my dots and opposite dots pictures, I can still do things like this. Five take away three, in my mind, is five plus the opposite of three. It's literally five dots and three anti-dots, three opposite dots, three tods. And then I've got the advantage of being able to smudge on a, a, a clean board here, a glass board, poof, poof, poof. Each dot and anti-dot disappear, each pile and hole annihilate each other, and I'm left with, oh, that's solid, two actual dots. So I can do the same work in my dots and opposite dots picture thinking here. All right, so let's now get actually to school arithmetic. So in school arithmetic, you do things like long subtraction, something like, I don't know, 564 take away 123. So what's really going on there? 564, so I'm actually speaking base 10 there, 500s, 6T, TY means 10, 6 tens and 4. So let me draw a base 10 picture of this. So here's the 1s, the 10s and the 100s. I'm literally saying 500, and I mean literally saying 500, 6T, 6 tens and 4, 4 ones. There's 564. And I'm doing this long subtraction, I want to now take away 123. But I don't believe in takeaway, I don't believe in subtraction. To me, this is the addition of the opposite of 123. The opposite of 100 will be one opposite of dot in the hundreds place. The opposite of two tens will be two anti tens, two anti dots there. The opposite of three ones will be three anti ones, three opposite dots there. Okay, great. Now I can see some piles and holes, some dots and tods that will annihilate. There's a pile, there's a hole, poof. There's a pile, there's a hole, poof. There's a pile, a hole, poof. There's a pile, 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 and hole, 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 poof, poof, poof. And I can see the answer is four hundreds, four tens, and one, one. Four hundred and forty-one. In fact, it's just as though I was reading left to right and went five take away one is four, six take away two is four, four take away three is one. Left to right. Math is actually how we read left to right, if you want it to be. And I like that. I like going left to right. Okay, but you might be thinking, well, that was too nice a problem, James. Come on, that's not, things aren't going to be that nice, and left to right might get thorny in a moment. So let's do something thorny at this moment, now. All right, let's try something like uh, uh, 512 take away 234. How's that one? Well, if I go left to right, 5 take away 2 is 3. 1 take away 3 is negative 2. 2 take away 4 is negative 2. The answer is 300 negative 2t negative 2. <laughs> Actually, I'm correct. That is actually a solid, mathematically correct answer. I will draw you a picture to show you I am right. So here's the ones, tens, hundreds, five hundred, five actual hundreds, one T, one ten, and two. Please add the opposite of two hundreds, two anti-dots. The opposite of three tens, three anti-dots. The opposite of four ones, four anti-dots. There'll be some annihilations. Dot and anti-dot, poof. Dot and anti-dot, poof. Dot and anti-dot, poof. Dot, dot, anti-dot, anti-dot, poof, poof. There we go. And I see what I've got here is really three actual hundreds, two anti-tens, two anti-ones, 300, negative 2t, negative 2. Beautiful, correct. 
mathematically solid. It's just that society will not accept that answer. They think that's too weird an answer. So now we have a very interesting challenge. This is why I love teaching mathematics to kids, to anyone, because actually it's full of these opportunities to deal with problems and say, what am I gonna do? I'm panicking. Take a deep breath and try to do something. So what could we do to fix up this answer, which society won't accept, into an answer society would accept? This is not a mathematical problem anymore. This is about fixing up society's preferences. Society is very demanding. It doesn't like that answer. And you say to yourself, well, okay, uh, well, what, what do I want? What, what could I possibly want here? I mean, wouldn't it be nice to have some dots there to actually annihilate with those, those anti-dots? That would actually help with that, get rid of those anti-dots. So how about I get some dots there? And you think about this for a while, a few minutes, a few hours, maybe overnight, and you might eventually have a flash of insight. Because you realize, oh, in a base 10 system, 10 ones, 10 dots here, make 110. And 10 dots here, 10 tens, make 1 100. And 10 one hundreds make 1 dot here, 1,000, and so on. Backwards, that means this dot here really was 10 tens. This 1 100 was really 10 tens. So let's do that. Let's undo this dot and make it 10 tens. Still 100, but now I'm getting some dots where I want them. Is that 10 of them? That's now 10 of them. Whoa. I think the curriculum calls that boring. Um, I would call that unexploding in my exploding dots story, but whatever, however you think about it, yes, 10 tens, same as one dot there, let's use that to our advantage, because now, dot, opposite dot, poof, dot, and opposite dot, poof, and now I can see the answer, 280 negative two. Sounding better for society. In fact, let me keep going, because I would love to have some dots there as well, to get rid of these anti-dots which society doesn't like in my answers, so let's do the same thing, because one ten is really the same as 10 ones. Crazy! Now I've got seven of these and an extra ten of those. Ah, but annihilations. Dot, anti dot, dot, anti dot. Poof, poof. There we go. That's really eight of them. Oh, now I see the answer 278, which is acceptable to society. By the way, by the way, I do actually like my left to right approach here, the answer 300, negative 2, negative 3, because I can see the answer 278. Look at this. That 3 is really 300. That negative 2 there is really negative 20. That negative 2 there is really negative 2. Three actual hundreds, two anti tens, negative 20, two anti ones, negative 2. 300, take away 20 is uh, 280. Take away another 2 is 278. It's all beautifully consistent. All beautifully consistent. And in fact, even the standard algorithm people have been taught for decades, in fact centuries, is doing exactly this. Left to right, like I want to do, but actually go right to left. Opposite how we're taught to read in our, our schoolroom classes, at least I was in Australia. Um, okay, so you look at the right hand side first, two and four, two take away four. Now I could write negative two, that's actually correct, but the standard algorithm does not want you to do that because I want to have an answer that's acceptable to society right away. So I've got two dots here, I want to take away four from them, what can I do? Well, the algorithm says, no, 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 take one of these dots and unexplode it, leaving none behind. Take one of these dots, unexplode it, to leave none behind, and I guess make an extra 10 dots there. Oh, just like we did when we were going through this. So I make an extra 10 dots there. So now I've got 10 dots and the two dots, the 10 dots and the two dots, except, except, the standard algorithm was invented in the what, 1500s, 1600s, when ink was really precious. Paper and ink were precious. Don't waste ink by writing the full number 10. Save yourself a little bit of ink by just putting a little one next to the two and make it 12 right away. 10 and 2 makes 12. Save ink. Here we are in the 21st century, still saving ink. Anyhow, now I can do 12, take away 4, and I'll get 8 dots. Take away 4 leaves me 8 dots. Bingo. Now I'm left with 0, take away 3. I can't take away 3 from nothing, so what do we do? Same idea, unexplode. Take one of these dots, leave 4 behind. Take one of these dots, leave 4 behind, and make an extra 10 dots there. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10, oh, oh, except save ink, you must save ink. Ink is precious still, apparently, and make that 1, 0, 10 look like that. There's the 10. Now I'm going to do 10, take away 3, take away 3. Beautiful, and I'm left with 7 behind. 7 behind. And now I'm going to do 4, take away 2, no worries, take away 2, and I'm left with 2. 2. 
There's the standard algorithm. So it actually is the same as what we're doing. It's just a different approach, a different style to doing the subtraction. It goes right to left and does all the unexplosions as you go along. So you get an nice acceptable society right off the bat. I prefer to go left to right personally, get a strange answer, fix up society at the end. No worries. All good and correct paths to mathematics, lo and behold, are good and correct. It's actually fun to do it both ways. In fact, let's leave off today with a final challenge. I will give you a subtraction problem that's going to be hideous, and I'm asking, inviting you to give it a try. You can say, no, I don't want to give it a try. That would probably be the smartest thing to do. But for fun, maybe try it. Five. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, I've got all sorts of technology gremlins at work today. Apologies. But here's my final example. I'd like you to work out, if you so desire, and the answer could be no, I don't so desire, 51203980 take away 23499905 well, actually, can you do this at least? Maybe you could write down the James Tanton answer to this one without regard to what society thinks of the answer. Just get me an answer that you know is mathematically solid and mathematically correct. That'll be, that'll be doable at least. And then if you want the challenge, can you actually meet society's demand and convert that answer to one that society would accept? That's actually the hard work, meeting society's demands. Anyhow, lots of fun. If you do something like this, you can do everything. And I really like this approach to thinking about subtraction, not as takeaway, but subtraction actually being the addition of the opposite. I think it makes my mental understanding of subtraction so much easier and my work with arithmetic so much easier too. I kind of like that approach to things. So I hope this has been a helpful video. I hope it's been thought-provoking and fun. Thanks so much.